you know what the hell i think uh let's let's do this we're going to be talking about quite a few things i guess today i wanted to talk about the tom taylor thing i'm here with evil black cat hey true believers evil hey, black true, cat here with England hey true theme. believers yeah, you know, I always wondered, uh, you know, can I change it up? Can I just jump into the topic? But it's, uh, it sounds weird to my ears whenever I start a video and I don't say, hey, True Believers England team here, and this is what we have for you tonight. We're going to be talking about this Tom Taylor being bird and, uh, and uh, photographic effigy and uh, a lot of people's takes on it. Say again? The horror. I know, right? Uh, and, and really, does he deserve it? Uh, and, and to talk about that, also, they, they, uh, Bleeding Cool has collected a whole bunch of people um, who had something to say about it, and I thought it might be fun to uh, go over that. Um, first, I got to say this. I, I did see Tom Taylor's reaction. He's like, all right, comic books. Tom, you freaking admitted that you put your politics into the Superboy comic. You know, you, you don't just write comics. You write your freaking propaganda. Uh, Nightwing was absolute socialist propaganda. Uh, oh, I've got a billion dollars. I'm going to save the city. Yeah, for a day. I mean, you know, you know how much money governments spend, for fuck's sake. Yeah, uh, basically he went like, no, what was that? Like, there's nothing heroic about billionaires. Like, he doesn't have five or six billionaires who risk their lives every day on his speed dial yeah not on his contact list on speed dial yeah <laughs> so and, I, also, and also it ignores a previously established fact that nightwing was always rich like he wasn't billionaire rich but he was in the high millionaire rich yeah bruce wayne took care of him he was uh, no, kid. no, not Bruce Wayne. Like after he wasn't the... rich coming out of the circus. Uh, no, so the storyline was basically how he set up as Nightwing, like how he had the finances to be Nightwing is like his parents, because they were strepies artists, they couldn't get health insurance, so they used to save money. Uh-huh. And so when Bruce adopted him, like Bruce was in charge of keeping that money safe until Dick was old enough to have that money. Okay, so... so Lucius Fox decided to play the stock game and got him into. Got that's him actually a few that actually grand works to, for me. Yeah, so it went from that a few has. thousand grands to millionaire status. That that actually works for me. Yeah. Uh, well, I put out the one. I put out the feelers for whomever wants to jump on. Uh, like literally, I put this out on Twitter. So if you want to join in, join in. If you have something to say about this, come on in. Um, it's better than typing from the, uh, from the comments. And of course, I'm once again, going to put down people who only talk about the, uh, title. Holy crap. I found a whole bunch more comments and it was all based on the title. Nothing being said. One guy had a good conversation with me. All right. So it says Tom Taylor writes Nightwing and Titans for DC comics. Okay. As well as being the creator of the TV series, the deep based on his comics. This includes the blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. Uh, Kadoki, he recently posted one day, I'd love to have an honest conversation about Barbara Gordon, Batgirl, Oracle, her past or present or importance, the genuine, well-founded concerns people have, many of which are shared by her writers and editors, but it's not a conversation that Twitter's built for. I uh, fuck her, you wouldn't talk to us. I have, as far as that's concerned, I have zero, zero empathy for this guy because he will do the same thing to any of us. He I would talked, like to have a conversation with you about your writing on Superboy. It was horrible. I would have a conversation about you the way you wrote Nightwing. It was not good. You know, there but but if we don't like a certain if we don't like Superboy, it isn't because of the writing, it's because he's gay and we all hate gay people. Even if we are gay, it's uh this new thing where oh my gosh, it's uh it, it inverted uh homophobia or something or, or racism. internal yeah internal thank you yeah Point guess, guess is, what got me blocked by tom taylor uh what so someone like i will assume that this person that commented on tom taylor's post did not understand how the comic book thing works so he just asked like hey like the first appearance of gay super 
Superboy's boyfriend basically uh-huh. was wasn't selling on my store but as soon as the that their gay together got announced like it started to sell like what happened and like anything and i basically just explained like all right so now that he became from more of a main character than just a random side character uh people wanted to buy him and i was explaining to that guy how speculations work and how what speculators yeah. do okay Apparently that was too much for Tom and it wasn't that I was saying oh it's just speculators and not his his story is good that he decided to block me. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah, he wants a conversation with whom? He wants a conversation with a mirror. That's it. Hand- just the mirror. He couldn't, he couldn't handle the fact that I said yeah, maybe it's speculators. Yeah. Well, it is because they're like, oh my gosh, people are going to want this book now because he's, get- I don't get the like first thing. appearance of uh, the Jay Nakamura character. Yeah, I know. The like one where when he went uh, from being from what, when he went from being just random character to, okay, the, he's going to be a big player in Superboy comics. From yeah. He, he back in his first appearance where he was lusting over uh, Tim Drake's mom. So he goes on, and if to prove no, just how writing was, people started posting pictures and videos of themselves. And uh, Tom Taylor says, I write comic books. I make kids TV. This is going to be the last negative anything I highlight or rise to on here for a while. But even if we uh, don't meet your standards in entertainment, please try to remember there is a real person on the other end of your... Uh, once again, look, I get it. I actually agree with him. I think the burning of the picture, it's childish. It's not a crime. It's childish, but yeah, uh, yeah. It, but it, I look, man, look, I looked up like who the people were, and so saying childish, one was sixteen, the other was I think nineteen or something. So okay, it is yeah. children being childish. Yeah, it, it's childish, but it, it's nothing. It's nothing serious. But I understand. Come on, you know, it's like. Uh, I, I remember uh, when Secret Empire came out, some guy was burning Captain America comics. Look, I hate the freaking thing, but really? I, they're your comics. Do with you what, what you will, I guess. But this person had to print out a Tom Taylor picture in order to burn it and then post it and do the whole thing. You're wasting way too freaking much time on Tom Taylor. I mean, at least I'm getting content for the channel. And in some way, this is going to benefit me through uh, the ad revenue that, that the video is made of. But you are literally just, okay, here you go. I'm burning the picture. Yeah, there's just way too much work on that one. I don't know. Hello to Tehillium, to Aqualad, Dark Admiral, March uh, Hare, the Elk of Antoich, Antoich and Tiach. Uh, he's saying, Bruce Wayne, pay Nightwing, me too, money. <laughs> uh Let's see. He has also blamed the editors. Man, he blamed, they they all blame everybody but themselves for uh, their mistakes. Yeah, it's uh, like the old joke for doing that. Yeah, it's like the old joke of a guy leaving the country because 500 years ago you were hanged, and if you were uh, if you were gay 50 years ago you were given a warning. Now it's it's absolutely uh, it, yeah, it's way accepted, and for some reason in this time where everybody is more accepting of everything we're considered uh, a, a hateful country it's freaking ridiculous the only people i ever hear hate from are the people on the left go figure let's make that political now here's something i really really liked uh let me scroll up we have he- heather antos commenting comics are dying yeah maybe it's because how y'all treat creators you and the horse you're being. i swear to gosh it is just, you are the freaking cause of it all, Heather. You took this, this these speaking of being childish, three kids talking about, oh, she's bangable. She's not. I like the one in the front. And you made it into a whole freaking day that's still remembered today as far as uh, the comic book industry is concerned. For those of you who may be too young and don't remember, that is uh, Milkshake. Uh, make, make my milkshake. She started it. She, well, you she's mean, the catalyst, I should say, that started uh, the whole comics gate movement when it was a uh, when it was a, a comic book revolution, uh, comic buyers revolution. She didn't like. We can't say she started it. No, uh, she it was, was like the one that she was Avalon, No, it avalanched and it became mainstream during. Oh, that's time. right. Yeah, she came after. You're right. You're right. Yeah, because like after because before that, it was just most people arguing on Twitter. Like I think it was. 
Yeah, I was just here kept, and there. Yeah, I forgot who kept regularly going after Splato Blocktavius. Oh, that is uh, Doug Ernst. I, yeah. I, I actually am going to re-release re those videos, I think. The uh, the Source Fed Nerd or whatever it was called and the one um, where it was like uh, we're not the same person that started it all. Uh, Mitch Gerard says, one of the kindest men I've ever met, an ally to all, a dad, a solid human who works very hard to, to do his dream job. Sounds like he's describing Hitler. Um, <laughs> and people out here burning uh, his photo because he writes fictional characters different than they'd like. Get help. Sincerely, it's not okay. It's not funny. Um, it's what they wanted to do. I agree uh, with him, actually. I, I, I think you're just going a little bit too far. Is it funny? Well, you know, everybody's got a different sense of humor. You can't really say you, you, you can say you don't find it funny, but uh, come on. Um, I, I was joking. The thing is, uh, I'm sure there were people who were saying, uh, oh, wow, he was really he was a really good guy. As a matter of fact, I believe they said that about uh, what's his name? The gay dude who cut, chopped people's heads off, put him in the in the freezer and such. My my head is ha has no names in it tonight. So um but seriously, here, here's the real thing. Any of these people who are putting you down on the internet, you go to a convention, you can have a conversation. They they will probably be, as he says, the nicest people you ever met. It's uh it's just online. Okay. I'm sorry. I actually thought I was gonna defend Tom Taylor. I really did come on to defend him. Because this it was ridiculous burning his picture. Because some people could take that um, as a scary thing, you know. Uh, so I can under I can understand that. Uh, I was actually, I, but I can't. I'm sorry. I, I because I see. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm being petty. I you know what? Uh, I just see him as being such a fart. You know, to everybody who has ever disagreed with him. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so uh, oh, Ben Temple Smith, oh, going ahead. I don't again. feel sorry for this guy at all. This this is the crowd he wanted. This is yeah, the yeah. He cultivated. They thought of. Like the you're right. If you're stuck with these lunatics, have fun. Ha <laughs> ha. What is it? What's the phrase? Hung by his own uh, by his own petard or something like that. I don't know what petard is, but hmm. petard's huh. older brother. Maybe do by the way, that. people who uh, say drink your own piss and you'll stay healthy, they are right. This is just so. Um, yeah, but, but you want to do it while you're hydrated. If you do it when you're dehydrated, like it doesn't taste as well. Uh, I, I, okay, I'm just, by the way, I am joking. It's mint tea, but I only put one tea bag for the whole gallon because uh, I really just want water with a touch of flavor to it. All right. Uh, ben Temple Smith, can we just chill the f out, please? Have we learned nothing in the last few weeks? Jesus, so sorry you have to deal with this lunacy and so much more, man. You have been and always will be an utter class act. Only to, I guess, you've been. I'm telling you, there's a whole bunch of people he's been complete shit to. As a matter of fact, uh, maybe that's what got these people to uh, start. Actually, I believe the reason why they're burning him in put, like pictorial effigy is because he's writing Batgirl as Batgirl and not as Oracle in the wheelchair and so forth. And look, I agree. I think Batgirl was a better character it, as Oracle. It is but. why, and the other thing is, some of, like it is one of the main reasons people hate, hate on him right now. But he's not the one that did it. Even Gail Simone, who wrote the first New 52 Bat, Batgirl, didn't do it. It was uh, it was sent from on high, you know. It, 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 it was it was, but I get a feeling like Gail Simone kind of pushed for it, like because she hated the whole. Uh, they did it to, they heard her to get to Jim. Like, oh, you took a woman's. Uh, what is it? What is that word? I can't remember. Uh, yeah, now it's it's pat. It's whatever I have is catching. So there you go. Now nah, you, you're old. I speak a different language. <laughs> <laughs> like I uh, to tell him the saying, uh, England team is getting language. teabagged. Yes. Yeah. Uh, anywho, <laughs> autonomy. That's what I autonomy. Mean. Yes, yes. Yeah. That, uh, somebody they took away her autonomy yeah. by making her a victim, and instead of thinking, how do you get to a man? like Jim Gordon and the best way to get to any person is put their daughters in harm's way. Well, in all honesty, I, I've said it before. 
I'll say it again. I actually like the Gail Simone Batgirl. I uh, do recommend it. Okay, so Mark Millar is saying uh, there's a cruel sickness in the mainstream comic scene right now. This is horrific. Everyone I know is just checking out and uh, working elsewhere. Uh, he talked about this a uh, couple of months back. I actually kind of thought he was going to continue with his YouTube and talk to everybody about it, but I, I unfortunately stopped. Um, Danielle has did, a million projects to deal with. I know, with. right? I know. You can hope. It's like uh, what Ethan's channel has become. I actually liked it better when he was just trying to teach art. Yeah. Um, to me, that was that was just so much more fun, you know? It's like you said. You want to talk about comics. A lot of people just want to talk about comics. Hello to the Authenticator. How are you doing, Dalton? Hello, everyone. I'm doing all right. We're reading off reactions to the Tom King situation and uh, – if we have time, we'll, we'll uh, break out into other topics, whatever you guys want to watch, so forth. So I uh, mm -hmm. do think that we'll find a way. I, I can't feel sorry for him. He picked. Yeah, the, yeah, you're right. He picked this crowd. Uh, you know, everyone except Mark Millar on that list wants to blame conservatives so badly it's killing them that they can't. That's Eric Breen. Eric, you should be here. Come, come forth, young man, and join. One of us. All right, so anywho. Um, <laughs> uh, let's, let's continue here. Uh, Daniel D. Nicolo is saying, this is not only effed up, but also pathetic. As much as I love doing comics, it's just comics. If you feel bad about not existing characters, uh, stop identifying yourself with fictional characters or stories. You don't like how writer writes, don't read their stuff. Fuck you. Fuck you. And, uh, well, as a horse, you're fucking, I swear to God. No. Here's the thing. We do care about these characters. You guys are such idiots. I swear to God. This is you. I was asked. Uh, well, I think it was you, Black Hat. You should do a video about how, why the industry is dying. I've done a few of them. But I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. This is one of the. This, this pisses me off. It pisses me off a lot that this was said by somebody who makes comic books. Comic books for the longest time. Now, I don't know how, if you're in the younger generation, Dalton, you can answer this. If you guys are in the younger generation, tell me if I'm wrong. But for us, now, it, it could be a lot different because they're mainstream now. But for us, when we were bullied, when we were ostracized, when we went through that awkward phase where we didn't know what was left and what was right, what was up and what was down, is all teenagers do at some point in time. There was Batman, there was X-Men, there was the Fantastic Four, Super, whomever you glommed on. Well, let's face it, it was the 80s, it was New Teen Titans and X-Men. But point being is, is that they were there. You know, the comic book, uh, the, the comic book industry, community as a whole was there. And that's what these fuckers don't get. It's like, it, it's like uh, they were, they, they came up. In the uh, time of the MCU, where the mainstream have glommed on to the characters, if not the comics, and they thought they can discover them themselves. They didn't, it, they didn't go through the beatings. They didn't go through the insults. They didn't go through uh, having to stand up to the bullies. They didn't go through all that shit. By the time the younger generation, the people are stepping up to write the books right now, got to them, it was okay. As a matter of fact, you know, you could you you could sit at school, read your manga. You could sit at school, read your Iron Man. People know who it was. It's a lot different back in the fucking day. So By these the characters mean more than just yeah. some malleable uh, clay that you could go, well, you know what? Spider-Man was this for 60 years. Fuck you. It's mine now. I'm changing him. Freaking Tim Drake was not gay for 30 years. So instead of making a gay character or finding something else or, or finding it uh, – a character who is in some way, shape, or form, as uh, Vita Ayala put it, uh, confused. They found a straight character and said, you guys, I don't care if you like them. I'm changing them. And the Be editor said, you know what, good, good reason. And you're a freaking homophobe if you don't like it. Go on ahead, evil black cat. Because there were some panels where he and his best friend were close to each other. That's it. That's well, the they don't that, have they don't have a off. they don't have an understanding of male friendship. They they yeah. they have to see any friendship or any emotional closeness as romantic in nature. 
it's one of their blind spots and it's freaking irritating and uh by the way aqualad is bringing up a good point stop identifying with the characters isn't that what people uh isn't that what people want for non-white people to identify and see themselves in the characters everybody should and that's the whole thing if you cannot see batman as a three-dimensional character you can't write him as a three-dimensional character which we're looking around, and that's what's going on with the comic book characters today. That's and why a lot of people are either dropping out of that hobby or turning to back issues, which are sold every Saturday night at 8 p.m. right here on this channel in yeah, the auction. But, okay, yes. she, she'll, she, she'll notwithstanding go 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 toward the auction and so on and so forth. But she'll notwithstanding, it's interesting to me that that entire sentiment exists because – if comics are so unimportant, if comics are so niche and wishy-washy and they don't mean anything and identifying with the characters doesn't mean anything, then why are you putting, and by you I mean like the entire social justice apparatus, why are you putting so much effort into co-opting, infiltrating, subverting, rewriting, um, new continuitying the entire industry? If comics are culturally unimportant and only freaks, losers, geeks, etc. identify with these characters, then why, oh why, pray tell, are you so interested in being the people who control the IP when it's convenient? Uh, to Helen, the last comment I saw from you was uh, the teabag one, which I read off. I thought that was kind of funny. That was the smoothest plug I've ever seen England. I'm not a shill. I, I, I am horrible at it. Somebody mentioned it the other day. Uh, it might have been you, but uh, so I'm going to try to work stuff in occasionally. Um, <laughs> why not? I don't think they understand any friendships. Example, Poison Ivy and Harley Quinn. Great friends. Horrible relationship. Horrible relationship, man. All right. Let me uh, move on a little bit here. Uh, to Torin Clark, who says some of you need to find a new hobby or therapy. Once again, I do agree that they went a little overboard burning a picture and everything because I could come off creepy. Uh, Tom is one of the nicest blokes in the whole world. Prove it. If this is your reaction to one of his stories, then just stop reading. Or how about this? Uh, just, just listen. Just give me, give me the benefit. Give me the benefit here, Turn. How about you take some of the criticism? And Especially because this is your customer base that's talking. Yeah, not yeah. To, also address the guy who said it, not Turin, the other guy on top. Turin, some of you need to – oh, uh, Jason, uh, yeah, okay, I see, I see. No one is forcing you to read them, but you know what? We want to read them, and right now the most – the worst people, the, the worst people in the world to have at the helm of the comic book industry is at the helm of the comic book industry. Because you don't care. Tom Taylor does not care. They don't. This is a there, there's a um there there's a an improv trick. There it's it's like a practice. Mirroring. Right? What it is, uh, hold on, let me finish. Um, and this is what comic books are. The the practice would be. I say a sentence and then you say a sentence and I say a sentence and you say a sentence. And what we're trying to do is create a narrative. And at the end, this is going to be one big story. Okay. It's uh, it's a lot of fun to do. It's uh, more difficult than some think, but it's supposed to create a story and that's comic books. You know, you, you can't hear, uh, the boy was walking along. He had a crutch on his uh, uh, under his arm to take care of his weakened leg. He rounds the corner, and all of a sudden he flies because his leg was a big old spring. You know, it, wait a second. No, you're, you're you're just you're not getting the message. You got to actually have it all fit together. And I get it. Comic books are weird, so maybe that's not the greatest of examples. But you don't. You, you got to make sure that every time you write somebody, you're writing the core of the character. And even Tom Taylor did not do that. He does not respect that. Um, to him saying, because I got some words that apply to the damage. Well, I am seeing some of your comments, so please uh, keep trying. These weirdos uh, got control. The weirdos, yep. Yeah. Uh, that's Undead Quinn. Glenn's just saying, comic press today are spiteful and resentful. They can't create, only alter and destroy, which... 
they're saying. Well, they're not uh, even they're not even particularly interested in creating because they don't see any sort of inherent value in the creation itself. They only see artistic value as um extrapolatory or secondary. They see it as a political or moral weapon. They don't care about in-universe logic. They don't care about these characters as three-dimensional hypothetical logical entities. They don't care about the worlds these characters exist in for their own sake. They only ask themselves, what is the what is the didacticism of this? What is the theme of this? What is the message of this? And how can I and how can I use it to my own ends? Uh, Gail Simone is saying, this is so messed up and pathetic. Also, Tom Taylor is one of the kindest and most talented creators going, if you agree with him, I guess. David is on. Art is about empathy. If you do this, you have none, and therefore our, your opinions are about uh, art is invalid. No, they're not. You know, look, I, I do agree that they went overboard, but no, their their opinions are just as valid. You can listen for five seconds. Also, if art is about empathy, then why is it that you never, you, you guys never seem to have empathy for your customer base, for the fan base, for the long-standing history of the characters, for the characters themselves, for the in-universe logic? Any of the above should be something you should be able to empathize with if art is indeed about empathy. But suddenly, whenever it's about anything in those categories, your empathy completely switches off. You only have empathy as it relates to your morality and your politics. Otherwise, okay. you can just switch it off. So we're going to get uh, we're going to get a something that sounds good, but they didn't do it with enough thinking about it. Uh, Neil Clyde says this is disgusting. If you're burning burning photos of a guy who makes superhero comics because you're uh, oh maybe no wait there you go uh, Project Rooftop. Y'all know you could critique superhero comics without harassing, threatening, or even tagging their creators. Here's one thing I know. Barbara Gordon and Dick Grayson don't send folks death threats. They fight people who do. Uh, well, you know what? They also fight next to the Red Hood who cut off the heads of a lot of mobsters. They fight next to uh, Harley Quinn who killed people along uh, when she was with the Joker. I'm sorry, but that is not a valid argument. If you're going to use the freaking comic book characters as uh, in, in that light... Black the way male. you said it, you really truly need to pick different characters. Uh, this is disgusting. If you're burning photos of a guy who makes superhero comics because you're not happy with the content of his comics, then you learn nothing from the superhero comics. Or as you know, a human being, um, once again, you, you could actually say, hey, look, uh, this is why I feel this. Now, Tom says he would love to have a conversation. Tom, okay. You know, I'll send out a freaking invitation. Come on in. Let's talk about the Barbara Gordon thing. I do believe that uh, the, the Gail Simone run was excellent. I, I liked it. But I believe that Barbara Gordon became a singular character when she was Oracle. She's not a Bat family uh, dressed as a Bat. She's not one of the group when she was or Oracle. She stood out um, even, even as part of the group. Uh, let's see. Tom Taylor is a woke uh, SJW activist, says Al Simmons. Uh, I don't feel sorry for him. Not a lot of people do. Like I said, I actually came on here because I thought I was going to uh, back Tom up on a few. I think it's ridiculous that they lit that freaking thing. But you know what? He's he, he kind of did it himself. He's there is a degree of Schadenfreude. Is is the thing. It, and this, there is there, and this is weird because somebody uh, brought up oh, after the events of the last few weeks, nobody's learned anything, you know. Uh, and as much as some dumbasses are tried to blame me and EVS and people who criticized or even said, you know, uh, Ed should have been um, more of an adult in that situation. All the people he named as responsible for what drove him to his uh, to to his death were people on his side of the freaking aisle. They're the ones that uh, seem to be getting overly violent about it. Even now, the people who burned him in pictorial effigy are on his side of the aisle. Yeah. And they would love, as uh, Eric said, to be able to blame it on us. 
Uh, let's see. Andy Oliver said last year when I was on the end of some particular unpleasant behavior with someone unhappy about our reviews policy, uh, Tom was one of the first to tweet in support, despite the fact that it must have been decades since I last reviewed one of his books, Top Bloat. This is awful. You know what? Anytime any of the leftists or uh, the other side of the cancel, the cancel culture or whatever you want to call it, the uh, culture war, Anytime some of them came over and attacked us, Captain Cummings would be one of the first ones to jump in. So by this guy's standard, he must think that Captain Cummings is an amazing freaking guy. Uh, some of y'all in fandom need to get a freaking – that is true. Some people do need to get a grip. You want to Joe Glass. For those of you who don't know, Joe Glass is possibly the uh, most intelligent person in comic book uh, journalism these days. Only uh, in bizarro world. If if we had uh, if there was a comic book Philip Morrow, it would be Joe Glass. Do <laughs> this to another human being's yeah, mental health over, over a twenty-page pamphlet is indespicable. Honestly, vile in human behavior. This is another human being you're abusing because you don't like how they handle a fiction, fictional character that they don't even own. Or uh, how about if they have an opinion on it, Joe? Um, how about we don't? Uh, uh, attack people and, and attack the character or because uh, they think Ironheart should be in a comic book that was called Ironheart. Sure, she eventually got there, but a lot of people were called a lot of horrible names because they were suggesting. Yeah, e, you're thinking of a different Joe maybe because this Joe Glass is the gay guy that is always begging and crying for uh, GoFundMes. Yeah, I was being sarcastic. <laughs> yeah, that's why I added the only in bizarro world there, yeah. asterisk. There's there. a different guy that I don't know. You confuse people. I thought this was you were thinking of a different guy. He dead he deadpan things. That's that that's one of the things he does. It took me but a second to get uh, used to it too. He dead wasn't things. Joe wasn't Joe Glass uh, like Jan Brady's boyfriend or something. Okay, so uh, this is wrong. It's rude, disrespectful, but more than that, it's not the way to treat a fellow human being. Uh, they didn't treat the human being any way. They, they burned his picture. It's not like they walked up and, hey, Tom, <laughs> die, you know, Nazi bastards. You, know, didn't, you want uh, to know the worst part of this? One of the two people that did it, like the one with the Supergirl uh, profile pic, uh -huh. there were two people... Uh, when Greg Smallwood uh, called uh, called out the people in uh, Ed Piscor's suicide note, like the ones he yeah. blamed, and he said he's not going to work with them, like the one with the su Supergirl uh, profile pic literally commented, people like you are why I don't feel safe in comic book stores. Right. Oh, Denny Cohen's. This is terrible. This is comics. Not uh, that serious. Also, sorry to have seen this. We have... Uh... See, people are sick, Tom. Very sorry. Uh, well, there you go. That's the, the general gist of things. Uh, Mark Russell said, the three pillars of toxic fandom. I enjoy not enjoying things. I am entitled to your attention, and I cannot move on. Yeah, I get it, though. You know, if you've liked a uh, character forever and a day, and all of a sudden somebody comes up, and they're like, no, 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 no. I'm going to completely rewrite them and mess them up. Yeah, no. Screw, screw you. You shouldn't deliberately and evocatively alienate your customers and your fan base for ideological reasons and only ideological reasons. Are we not going to talk about that aspect of it? Yeah. Uh, personally, once again, I do think it, at the very least it was tax. It was uh, tacky. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I get it. I get it. Okay, so anywho, um, let's get some comments and then we're going to move over to the next topic, which is going to be touchy. We're bringing race into this picture, guys. So, <laughs> oh no, yeah, jump on um, back. Yeah, we need a uh, uh, maybe, maybe we need a token so we can say, no, we got we got the card, we got the AOK. -okay. I don't know. Um, yeah, but we're going to talk about that in just a touch. Uh, don't get me wrong. I am pissed what happened to my boy, uh, John Kent. 
However, burning his picture and sending the video to him just feels wrong. Some people could, like I said, if, especially like, okay, they put it on the ground and burned it, but can you imagine if they burned it and held it? <laughs> then it becomes more creepy and threatening. I don't yeah. think they sent it to him, though. He just discovered it on his own. Well, yeah. and and even if even if they had, I mean, I'm sorry, but there's only so many times reasonable criticism of something can be taken as immoral before you're just like, screw it. If you're going to call me an immoral monster anyway, I might as well strive to get your attention so that you Not can't these, ignore me. These are people he agrees with. These are people he sides with. Um, so, okay. Uh, here, here's the thing. If you're talking about the X-Men, we're going to move on to the next topic. If you're talking about the X-Men, you can say Chris Claremont is one of the greatest X-Men writers of all time. And I believe in doing so, you're really saying if you're doing a top five and Chris Claremont is at the very number one of it. I mean, there, there is absolutely no uh, greater writer of the X-Men in all of comic book history. Just Certainly not. No, I'm going to, I'm going to put that out there. Apparently somebody don't, some people do not quite get that. Now I've got to be careful on this one <laughs> uh, because somebody discovered uh, Chris Claremont did so much good for the X-Men. His initial run as goat uh, that this guy's discovering this who, uh, says three times this is crazy what in the hell now what they're talking about and what what uh, he's getting talked about in is the fact that each one of these two panels uh kitty pride is bringing up the the n-word now a lot oh, of times a, well a lot of times uh chris is trying to be bold as saying you know and, and, he, and he's he's right in what he writes in one case one of the greatest uh, comic book stories of all time, God Loves, Man Kills. You have uh, Stevie, a dance instructor uh, and friend of the X-Men. She tells uh, she tells Kitty Pride, oh, come on. Uh, you know, the guy called you muty. What's, uh, what's, what's so wrong about it? And Kitty Pride goes off, well, what if he called me and, and he writes N -word. the word out? It's not, what if he called me the N-word? Not that. It just plays out. Just like that. Um, and it goes on. In, in the next clip, uh, Uncanny X-Men 196 has this black guy going up. You a muty then, Pride, like him? And she looks him straight in the face and says, gee, I don't know, Phil. Are you a, once again, spelled right out. And he's yelling, watch your mouth. She goes, especially, uh, and she says, watch yours, especially when you use words like that and uh, try to be intentionally hurtful. The guy's right in his face, so he is being threatened. Also, um, the, in the X Men universe, Marvel universe, the muty is considered a, a slur. That's right. It's a it's a slur, and the point of that particular thing is is you know you cannot climb on your freaking high horse if you're doing the same thing that you're telling people is bad. We see this all over now. What is it, that dumbass and the dumbass people who followed him? The more stupid. I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, you can't really call a guy a dumbass if he says the worst things in the world and people are like, no, he's right. But th he's saying that the only way to deal with the racism in the past is to be racist now. No, that's just more racism, you dick. But there's yeah. a lot of people who are like, that's a good idea, Hurricane. Jesus, Lord in heaven, some people are stupid. And then the third panel, she's saying, uh, who uh, New Mutants number 45, a uh, student was afraid to come out as a mutant because he heard all of his fellow students um, joking about him, calling bad names. And uh, he was scared to come out as a, a mutant, even though his only power was to create light sculptures. And he kills himself. So Kitty Pride says, who was he then that we gathered to mourn him? Who am I? A four-eyed, four flat-chested brat chick, brain uh, heeb, stuck up by uh, Xavier Snob Freak, by the way, he being a uh, slur for Jewish people. Sorry. It's kind of funny, though, that YouTube will probably not do anything about that one. Mm -hmm. Just saying. 
Don't like the word I could use nicer. I've heard worse who here hasn't so often, so casually that maybe we've forgotten the power that they, uh, they have to hurt. And he goes and right away. And here's, here's something. Uh, it starts with the N word, then uh, does the slurs for uh, Latinos, Italians, uh, Asian people, gay people, and of course, mutants. The list is so long, so cruel, their labels put downs and they hurt. Now, these are valid points yes. uh, that they're making that Chris makes in the comments using um, using Kitty Pride as the character, using yeah. the Jewish Jewish student, but she's not defending her, her uh, Judaism. She's defending her mutants, mut mutant ability. She's uh, defending being a mutant. And what gets me is just like I could I could say the H word for Jew. And uh, I'll probably get away. Uh, I'll, I'll get away with it. But there's only one word even in the uh, in the bubble that's got all of the slurs that will get people going. What? She said that one word. Mm -hmm. Okay, why why that one? You know why not uh, why not jump up uh, because somebody said honky? I know I could say that one all day, and, and you know nobody's going to give a shit. But uh, uh, unfortunately, we got that one. I never understood it because I always thought, wait a second, if you guys are, are, are saying, hey, you know it's it, it's a okay to be black, then how is there possibly a word that's derogatory to describe it? Just saying. Mm -hmm. All right, but there you go. Um, people are up in arms because Chris Claremont wrote those three passages. I think very much for the time it worked. I think very much for this time it won't because you cannot address race in trying to deal with race. You can only be racist nowadays and enjoy yeah, and dealing with racism. I send you a few other things like in the quote, like people quoting him and everything like that. Oh, oh, you did? I just saw that one, but... Um, I sent you multiple things, like... There's yeah, you did, really. Thing. There was when you were sharing it, I sent another jo joke, thinking it might have popped up. It didn't, apparently. <laughs> popped up on the screen sh screen share. Um, no, that's all I got. That's all I, that's all I saw, sorry. Uh, I got the, uh, but there you go. Um, what do you guys think about that? What do you think that Chris Claremont should be called out for something he did forty freaking years ago? It's well, no, no, he shouldn't even. Even if he did it today, he shouldn't have been called out for it. Even if he did it today, because I'm of the, I'm of the opinion that by giving certain words this special status of you can't say that or we shouldn't say that in polite company or whatever. All it's doing is perpetuating the specter of the word. Like all it's doing is giving more power to the word and making sure that that we power lasts it. forever. The only way to actually defang a word like that is just to treat it like every other goddamn word in whatever language you happen to be speaking. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Kitty Pride bringing up Nightcrawler. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Is that a Jared girl? Yeah, they gave me Jared girl. One of my favorite characters of the 1980s. He was in like two spectacular Spider-Man annuals. His name's Ace. And he's got the Jared girl mullet in the, the Michael Jackson jacket and everything. Like, oh. wow. You, there is no more 80s character. There's like a, there's a character that I think he joined X-Force. He's got like a backwards trucker hat and the only cover he's got his hands behind his back and it's like i think his name's extreme and i was like wow that's the most 90s character ever uh ace was the most 80s you just well you just no i i, I think i think snow flame might have everybody beat on that score so you 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 got a point on that one honestly claire's claremont is focusing on very delicate politics with the x-men which made sense yeah why are people over so over sense of over nothing i clout Cloud chasing, I guess. You know, woo, let me go after this person. Now that we're now that we're driving uh, comic book creators to suicide, who who can we get to next? Hon uh, you want to try Honestly, to I blame it being a low trust society. That's what I blame it on. When, when you trust? when you let when you let no the 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 reason why everyone is so oversensitive nowadays. I have a theory that it's because we live in an in a low trust society because in a High oh, trust well, society, okay. you're charitable towards your neighbors and your interlocutors and so on. In a low trust society, 
you believe that everyone around you might potentially be a demon or some other negative thing, and therefore everyone is on moral edge all the time. Okay, I, I, I want to know if uh, if there are any of my fellow middle-agers. Let's call ourselves middle-aged because everybody lives to 110, right? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, you know, I want to know. By if the time you a, get there, I'm sure we will, right. judging by how I, I, I want to know if you guys are there because I, I, I want backup on this. We, we used to have fun. I mean, we knew about the differences. We just didn't give up, seriously. Yeah. And we would tell jokes and uh, sometimes that we even just fought for fun. But uh, it, it was more it was easier going. Yeah. Black people made fun of white people. White people made fun of black people. Asians just sat back and took control of the world while we were uh, <laughs> being petty. You know, it was just it, it was a hell of a lot more fun back in the day because people weren't so fucking sensitive about everything and i don't even think they're sensitive about it i just think they're waiting you know like, oh, someone's gonna say something it's like the people that would watch married with children waiting for that that one thing that happened wrong oh here it is here it is let's get it canceled you know they're the mm -hmm. same people mm -hmm. oh he's gonna say something he's gonna do so well actually you know they meant this low trust society i tell you uh wasn't uh clear chris claremont saying something stupid about always wanting to take the men apart uh, out of X-Men a month ago. Yeah. he. I don't know what he's turned into, but it's not as good as it used to be. His writing yeah. is still good, so... Yeah. Well, I did a review on a book because uh, <laughs> I was like, what the freaking hell happened at Claremont? I hope it is. I hope it is. Uh, the leftist paper in my town gave Civil War a half star out of five, uh, even though the movie literally is leftist trying not to appear like leftist. Yeah, there was. I, I watched a little bit of it on uh, on the the pirate site, and I figured, you know what, I'm going to go out and see this one. It, it, it it's interesting, but there was a part where it was uh, that there's a journalist, and like none of them are asking any. Hey, you remember when Biden things up or anything like that? It was. Uh, do you now? Uh, do you now see disbanding the FBI as a mistake? That's the fa the fascist president that, that did that. Um, <laughs> so yeah, the, the lines are there. Um, still, what I saw of it, it looks all right. I'm gonna check it out. See everything. So any resemblance to persons real or imagined or perfect or purely coincidental? <laughs> yeah. Well, I do like the fact. Um, I was hoping it would definitely not be that way because. Uh, I figured that's why they team Texas and California together as to the parts of the country that were, um, that was rebelling because then you could blur the lines of politics. If they did this properly, it would be a movie about how this country is going overboard on its rhetoric. If the, if it was done properly, but I'm pretty sure that shopping cart is veering to the left all throughout of it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Otis is saying, uh, I've been called the N-word by all my friends and I would laugh at them. I've never actually taught. I've never actually said that uh, to, of course, my black friends. I mean, I, I used to have a book called Truly Tasteless Jokes, which we read and, you know, some of them would use the N-word. So, yeah, I've said it out loud a couple of times. Uh, let's see. Uh, I've been hard times in racism. I got through it and lived, says Undead Quinn. Everyone laughed at In Living Color. No group was spared there. That is true. That is true. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I can't wait for Mahler's EFAP of uh, of it. Oh, oh, the um, the Civil War. Yeah, I think those are pretty good. That where you go through and I don't know how he doesn't doesn't get copyright strike because I show three seconds of a video uh, of a movie or something like that. And, uh, this is claimed. That's claimed. This is claimed. Fashions can come from left or right when a group think is allowed. Yeah, I, there's there's a certain things that I think a lot of leftists miss about the country. And the first one is, is that uh, we're all supposed to be individuals. And the weird thing is, especially white leftists that I've seen, obviously, you know, I think there might be some smart, <laughs> there might be some smart. <laughs> okay, hold on. I can do this. 
there might be some smart leftists out that no i can't i can't, I can't. <laughs> but uh we what, what I, we have dalton I'm just like well, you got, sitting right well, here. I'm like, okay, is he gonna do the bit or is he not gonna do the bit? Okay, All right, but but the thing is, here here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, we have Dalton, and he uses big I words. I don't think he I don't think they mark. I don't think in general they see people as uh, as individuals, especially if you're not white. If you're black, you are not a black man. You're not a black woman. You, you are blackness in black people. Yeah, you you stand for everyone and. You are everyone. You have no autonomy. You have no sense of self. You are a collective. I've never heard uh, in, any leftist speak of a black guy, unless they're talking about like Kobe Bryant or somebody in uh, somebody in entertainment. Uh, poor leftists are just as smart as white leftists, so probably England. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. The collective hive mind is more dangerous to a fascist, uh, fascist point. Um, I, I, yeah, I just think uh, I think that's what you see with the uh, with the lefties and such. So I don't know. Uh, but you ain't black if you don't vote for me. Quote of the century. I know, right? The fact that the fact that that didn't drag him under is amazing to me. And and the fact that so many people in academia who literally specialize in critical race theory genuinely believe it is the thing like remember that um remember the um black subset at the smithsonian thing we reacted to oh, where they were yeah. like here's the, the, a list of all the things that are ideologically white and yeah if you are on are time black. being on time is racist uh because black people just they have color people time uh it's it was ridiculous that if you are hard working, that's racist because black people like what are you freaking say? How are you? Uh, I, 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 I because because they think okay. that the way we do things is oppressing even ourselves, and so subjecting anyone else to those standards is harmful to them. Basically, all right. That's how they so get themselves to sleep at night. Is there enough news yet on this? Uh, on this. What is it? The DC Ultimate Ver Universal? Is there enough information on that? I know you sent a little link, but yeah. Uh, 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 basically, uh, Mark Wade is going to do the first part, and then S Scott Snyder is taking over after that. Like he's helming it. Okay, so basically, Eric is going to just skip over the first part and go on because, uh, yeah, some people have checked out on Mark Wade. Absolutely, freaking lutely because of the stuff that he's done and such. You know, it's uh, it's ridiculous. Um, I'm, I'm, I am so indifferent to everything. What are you, what are you gonna promise me? You know, seriously, what, what can they promise you to start the DC universe all over again with the Ultimate DC universe? Um, what is it that they can do now? Caring about character yeah. in universe logic and world building would be nice. Uh, those yeah. have been thrown out the window oh. ages ago. No, I know, but that he asked the question, what would it take? And that is what it would take. You need to care about characterization consistency. You need to care about continuity. You need to care about in-universe logic. And you need to care about in-universe world building. They, Sans all this interpretivist, that diegetic they, uh, bullshit. They are guaranteed to do this because in that case, one universe, they can forget like continuity and everything and do whatever. No, I know, want. but again, the question was asked, so I answered the question. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I like your answer to it too. Uh, Rhaegar saying, I was told speaking proper English was white at six, so nothing new here. Rhaegar, back in the uh, 90s, if you were called, an, if a black person called you an Einstein, he meant it as an insult. Enough in with you. That's been it's been around for a long time. I've I've been thinking about this because I I I don't know if you, what you guys get, but I clicked on a couple of these fight videos, and now all I see is the worst of the black race. I mean, I'm serious. It is just one after the other. I don't want to watch people get punched, but that's what Twitter's feeding me now because I clicked on uh, a couple times. I'm not gonna say just once. Um, and really, the fight that I wanted to see is there's a YouTuber. He's one of those uh, I'm going to prank people. Um, little white kid with freaking curly hair. I, I want to watch those because one day somebody's going to take his ass out. And I don't want to miss that video. <laughs> but um, 
Yeah, it, it's true. Back in the '90s, being called an, an Einstein was a uh, was an insult. I love the sidekicks and the mentors. I feel like DC has been separating them, except Batman and Robin. Um, I don't know if it's going to be good, Tevia. I I hope so. You know, part of me really hopes so. I hope they. Uh, I hope it's a case of they can finally write good stories because they're free. And not they can really push that agenda because they're they're on something different, you know. Um, especially if they don't do something where they're giving new uh, books to new the new universe to new creators and the old universe to older creators, which would be awesome. You know, Mark Millar made this big rallying cry to older creators, come on in and let's save comics. I think you we're know. just going to have to wait until and, uh, the big two crash and burn and then buy our characters back from them. That's basically how this is going to have to work. Yeah, but the it. problem is right after Mark Miller made that claim, the guy that's supposed to be doing part one said, I would rather the industry burn than do it. Yeah. Um, Glenn's just saying recent purchases, Gotham Central. That's a good book. I like Gotham Central. Uh, recent, in spite of me selling off two of my favorite uh, showcase books, uh, the last purchase I made for myself was um, Showcase uh, The Metal Men, Volume 2. I, I do like those. I, I do like the phone books. Uh, let's see. Donny Cates has finished his image books. Uh, Pat S. Comic books are for, aren't for us anymore. If they are, those books are under the radar. I think a lot of the ones that they've been putting out, like the Joe Fix It, and then things that kind of continue the 90s stories and all that, the 80s stories. Yeah. The Man of Action is saying there's no helping the big two. Man of Action, you've been around for quite a bit, and I appreciate your viewership. And um, uh, seriously, thank you very much for that. And you know for a fact that a few years back, I, I would have been a shell. I would say, don't abandon. You can't abandon. If you abandon, we abandon the characters. And, and they're lost. Marvel and DC has worked me down. I honestly, I don't care. I nowadays I want Batman and Superman in the public domain. I want Spider Man. I know it's going to take uh, more years, but I want Spider Man and Mar and Fantastic Four in the public domain. I want to see them in different hands. I want to see people who care about the character to be able to do that. And I know we're going to get freaking Superman blood and honey. You know, it's uh, it's going to be something some uh, similar to that. You're going to it's but I would love to see what people who truly love the character can do it. You know, like you, like you get a new Sherlock Holmes every two, three or four years. See, my harebrain scheme is to wait until the big two go under and then buy the characters I want from the big two. And then they're mine because yeah. like one, because my characters are obscure enough, I don't think anyone is going to fight me for ownership of <laughs> my characters. And two, then I never have to watch someone destroy my characters again because they'll be mine. So dang it, that's that's, that's my that's my evil scheme. Wait for the big two to go under and then crowdfund all the money I need to buy them from them. Yeah, but uh, Dalton, here's a question: What's going to happen to your characters after you die? <laughs> Shut the <laughs> um, I will will them to uh, whoever I think will use them well. That, it's a joke. It's a joke on the question I asked Mike Barron. Uh, Tevye is pointing out that there are good books out there, and there are. Um, we got to get back to reading one of them, which is Skiers, uh, which you guys have ignored the videos we have done. Uh, we did have we've done read throughs through all of the issues. It's been a blast, uh, but. Because I was moving, we couldn't do issue number four. I, I know, I know, Tevia, but what's going to happen when only the people who can crowdfund versions of their favorite character storylines enough to own them now own those characters? Like, I want a really big Superman fan to have rights over Superman. I want, to, and of course, you know, me being me, I want to have rights to all of the magic user characters. They're mine now, goddammit. That's, that's my plan. And then I think the industry could actually make a bounce back if those characters were handled by people who had genuine love for them enough okay. to crowdfund purchasing them from the big two when the big two go under. I'll tell you what, what, what do you consider a good, uh, if you guys still have a good big two book, what do you consider 
consider the good ones to be. Uh, I I have found independent comics. I have found in a, you know I like beneath trees where nobody sees. Uh, there was a graphic novel last year about a serial killer I, I particularly liked. They got a lot of stuff wrong, but uh, you know nobody asked the guy from Florida. <laughs> Dumbasses. Um, let's see. Someday uh, somebody said Monkey Man in the League of Ungentlemanly Warfare was good. Hmm. Um, Man of Action says there is no industry that squandered that press. In the end, it is pushing. They've shown the bait and switch uh, when they fell on their swords with Scholastic. Yeah, I think a lot of stuff went down when they uh, when Diamond went away. Glenn was saying, I don't read new comics, but if I had to choose one uh, based on RDV and Zach's show, I'd choose G.I. Joe. Yeah, I heard that one was pretty good. Um, we're getting over the hour mark. I've got some comics to show off. Uh, I uh, went antiquing and uh, flea marketing today mm. with, with Gail. We've Fine. been enjoying our time together a lot up here, and I appreciate that. Um, we're looking for other income. I can't do eBay. Tonight, as a matter of fact, I just found out um, that you guys heard me at the auction. I am so low on cash. Um, I actually had to do something that any grown person living on their own has to do sometimes. I had to go to the parents because mm. I sold a carnage statue. Okay, it's a really cool statue. I'm not oh, a big fan no. of the character, but this is a the statue stood about yay. Uh, it was a good foot and a half high. And he's on a cathedral, you have these spires you put in, so it looks like his things are going all over the place mm -hmm. and it I, I was able to get it for fifty dollars so i asked for a hundred with fifty dollars shipping because it is you know ceramic statue and so forth mm -hmm. so uh I, I talked to the guy because this is happening while i'm moving and he's like yeah yeah don't 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 bother it's fine i'll, I'll get it when you do so he's, we're i'm emailing him okay i promise you i'm gonna i'm gonna try as soon as possible get so the communication was really good. He sends a picture and he's mad. Uh, uh, Carnage had no head, so he has to return it. Now I got to come up with the uh, 150, and I, I think the guy's on the level. I really, do. but you know, there's always that one thing because I used to sell CDs and I used to, I, I did sell snow globes, uh, Disney snow globes, and with the snow globes, every damn one, even if they were in their package. Oh, this one's broken. I need my money back. I'm like, bitch, you know what you're doing. You know you had that. You ordered mine, and you go, well, okay, you know. So it's always in the back of your mind, but actually I think so. Um, we're looking for a way to get out of that, and then we found a flea market. Um, we, we found a flea market to go to. It's one of these where you uh, you pay your monthly, and then you just leave a code on it, and then they pay you the money at the end of the week or month. And so we're going to see how that works. And I am dumping eBay. So fingers crossed that works out for us tomorrow. Uh, that being said, hey, Dominic, how are you doing? I'm doing well, Angleton. How about yourself and, and the rest of the fellas? Um, well, I could say I'm doing pretty good. Mm, By yeah. the way, Action Comics Superman have been amazing, says Tevia. Cool. Transformers is good. Um Dang, you finally saw I did sell sell that con carnage and uh I, I told him I said okay I I would never send a statue knowingly uh knowing that it was broken. It just doesn't work. And he was mad and I said, look, I, I'd be I am pissed that it, it happened like this. Uh but I understand you're mad because he apologized when I was you know very calm and such about it. I was like, motherfucker, you no, I wasn't gonna do that. Um and I said, you know, I need the money. And uh, yeah, what you gonna do? I gotta send it back. Um, so uh, I do have some books for this week's auction, and uh, my plan is still to buy books for the auction. And what doesn't sell is gonna go to the flea market if we get it. But uh, here we go. Um, these first three are book. They're gonna be in the uh, fifty center books because I I was like, wow, cool. I'll get this and I'll get this. And I just pulled them. Gail and uh, Elizabeth were, we're hungry. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. But I did get, oh, let me uh, get, get this here. But I got uh, Zorro Zero from Topps Comics. This was from the 90s. 
Uh, unfortunately, right. the, what makes it a 50 center is I looked and it's got water damage. Uh, mm. You can actually feel the ridges right along here. Ooh. Yeah. Oh. And I just looked at, I actually thought that maybe uh, that the uh, roughness around the edges here was actually part of the uh, cover because it's a golden age character. And then I noticed, nope, that that's missing a chunk out of the corner. This is Masquerade number one from Dynamite Comics. Um, oh. So, yeah, since it's got the chip and it, uh, on the corners and such, I'm going to put it in the dollar and the uh, 50 centers, as well as this one, which also this is the first appearance of Captain Carrot. It's uh, New Teen Titans number 16, and it's got that at the bottom. So those three are going to be in the 50 centers. The rest of, of these right here in the pile I've got in my hands are going to be the dollar books. But um, got Wildcat Adventures number one. Something called Prophet and Chapel Super Soldiers number one. Got Savage Dragon versus the Megaton Man. A book that I swear to gosh is good, but nobody gave a shit after Valiant. Here's uh, Warriors of Plasm. This is Jim Shooter's uh, Defiant Comics. Speaking of Image, Shadowhawk number one, <laughs> which is actually pretty good. I agree. I, I, say again? Oh, do you agree? Yeah. I will get Gen 13 anytime I can find them. That is, but this is issue number 50. Um, cheesecake sells, so zealot number one. <laughs> uh, I just always love the, the shiny cover, it's uh, XO Man Award number zero. Uh, more books that I'll buy every time I can find them are the uh, Kirby Chromes, the, the Tops Comics. This is Bombast, <laughs> and we have uh, Satan Six. Oh, all right, all right. Uh, all the, all these are these these ones are going to be for a dollar at the auction. The ones right. that I've been reading off uh, after the first three, we got Legion of Superheroes, and this is issue number six. Right. Uh, then we have uh, Legion of Superheroes from the '90s, issue number sixty-six. Hmm. All right, yeah, I really want to find that Ad Adam Hughes uh, cover for as little so I could charge a dollar if I wanted to. Under the radar our, under the radar books as we speak of what are we talking about? Transformers has good art. I keep hearing Transformers is pretty good. Uh, comics now are too much hype, no real substance. I think they really do need to take a, a they need to just have a year where there's no events, just do the characters, let's get them. But uh, as I've said before, be careful what you wish for. They might just give it to you. Uh, here we have from Top Cow Comics, and this is uh, Sharif David K.O. It's uh, Battle of the Planets. At first, I thought this was Battle of the Planets issue number one, but it's uh, Battle of the Planets Mark issue number one. <laughs> By the way, I am a huge fan of the Gotchaman. Uh, God bless you, and thank you very much for the uh, Funko Pops uh, RDV. You're um, welcome. I... Uh, on the shelf next to me, I usually display the uh, Funko Pops, and I certainly appreciate that. Whenever we find them out of the, uh, did you remember that you had them? You just found oh, them. Yeah, again? yeah, yeah. We, I brought them. <laughs> I brought them along. I brought them along. Uh, here we have Battle of the Planets uh, Book Two. Like I said, I thought the Mark issue number one was number one. I was like, oh, I'll get both of them. Maybe put them as a pack for things. See, I thought. Uh, maybe, oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say that maybe now you're you're unboxing things. Like, hey, I have these. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we lost Dalton. Dalton, uh, if you come on in, do you remember Death's Head comics? Yeah, Pat, if you're interested, I'll look for him. Yeah, you I give me the heads up. Uh, yeah, I'll look for Death's Head. But speaking of uh, the, the English comics, here's Marvel Frontier Comics, and this is uh, Children of the, the Voyager. Oh, the Voyager, yeah. That's, I, I have that. I have that, like, in the form of the of oh, the complete trade paperback of the, Marvel Frontier. The skull is uh, is embossed, so you can actually feel the skull. Oh, that's I awesome! Think, yeah, that is an awesome. Uh, that that's an awesome feature there. All yeah. right, but, and hello to all again. Welcome back. Um, the first season. Okay, I'll take a look for the first season there, Pat. Our first uh, series. Thank you. Okay, so uh, if you're talking about what is the greatest comic books of all time. You, you, you have to put in Nightman, right? 
Hey, Don Moraga, he's, he's previewing the uh, he's previewing the books he plans to do on Friday or Saturday. Yeah, these are some of the books that are going to be on in the auction on uh, Saturday. Uh, hey, Moranya, what's up? Come on in. <laughs> uh, these are going to be some of the two dollar books right now. I might shift, but uh, these are these are going to be some of the two dollar books. We have Roy Thomas and Rick Hoberg and Bill Collins on All Star Squadron number thirty two. Ooh, nice. A very underrated series, if you ask me. Uh, and then we have Wildcats and X-Men, and it's called The Silver Age. Blink. There you go. Chew on that. It's okay. No, not, my, not my finger. All right. <laughs> we got Wildcats and X-Men Silver Age, number one. I don't know if it's a one-shot or if it's just a mini-series. Uh, no, it's actually part, part of a miniseries of the crossover okay. between Wildcats and the X-Men. This one might actually make the dollar bin. Uh, I just noticed it's got a line going down the side, so I think this one's going to make the dollar bin. Besides, the last few I had didn't sell, but this is Strange Sports number six. Well, they, they sold, but it took a long time. Uh, then we have um, John Burns' Wonder Woman. Here's issue number 104. And we have issue number 114. And we have The Adventures of Superman, issue 441, with Mr. Mitzel Pitokolik. Uh, we have the Amanda Connors variant of Supergirl, number 29. All right. Yeah, no, I like that one. And then we have uh, Power Girl, number three. Good series. Oh, it's Actually, a very good series. What, what issues of Wonder Woman did you have? Uh, 104 and 114. Oof. You, one of them, you were just off ah. by one issue. Uh, next up, we have DC Comics Presents number 20, where he teams up with Green Arrow. And we I... all wonder, okay, so what can Green Arrow do that you can't do Superman? <laughs> yeah. All right. Punch next a guy up. from distance. Uh, uh, own a building. <laughs> Black Canary. Yeah. Look, well, 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 it's not that Superman <laughs> couldn't own a building if he wanted one. It's just that Clark is too humble for that. <laughs> All right. Uh, next up, we've got Superboy and the Legion of Superheroes. This is issue number two hundred and thirty-nine. Uh, normally, I would put these at uh, three dollars or more, but unfortunately, the back is not as clean as I would want them to be. Uh, and that's that's all of them. So they all make the t the uh, two. This is Superboy and the Legion of Superheroes issue number two hundred and fifty-five. All right, all right, Mister uh, Screaming Bird, kind of flowy. Uh, and then we have the very <laughs> first issue of Legion of Superheroes in their own comic. That's issue number two hundred and fifty-nine. Wow, John Cusick face. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have issue number two seventy-four. And we have issue number 279. So we got some decent Legion at the $2 mark. Uh, I'm thinking the next ones will be the $3 books. Uh, we have the first appearance of Plastique in Firestorm number seven. Nice. We have issue number two of Firestorm, where he's fighting Killer Frost. And then uh, we have issue number 31. Will you stop? Stop, 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 Okay. That's, by the way, a noise he does when... That's the noise he does when he doesn't like something. Come here. I, I can't hear anything. All I hear is that the, the shrill ear in my eyes. I know, I know. He's loud. He's yeah, okay. if, it, if it's not the, if it's not the uh, biological bird, the ceiling bird... <laughs> Right. You hear that? Right, right, right. That's, uh, that's him not liking what's going on. Okay, next up. Hey, can you take the bird upstairs for me, please, when you go upstairs? Put him in a padded cage. Put him, yeah, put him in his yeah. cage. He's worn up his welcome. But so don't, gets... did, didn't you know ceiling birds are real birds? <laughs> not, ac not according to TikTok. There you go. No, you have to actually take him. Okay, there you go. Thank you, honey. Yeah, There's a window. In his cage. 
There's a winner. Okay, right uh, as I was saying, uh, next up on the three dollars, we've got Ms. Marvel issue number thirty-one. Sweet. And then we've got issue number thirty-three. Nice. Awesome. And nice. issue number thirty-six. I'm going. I'm going back tomorrow to to see if I can't mine more of these out. Um. I, I saw any time. This is this is an any time book. If I find one, and it's uh, it's inexpensive enough to me for me to put it at uh, three to five, I am definitely getting it. 31, 33, and thirty six. Yep. And these are at the right now. I'm going to call them five dollars, but I really do need to go through and check them out. Uh, some of these are going to be five dollars, or because they're a set. But um, I have the very first appearance of the Blue Devil. And this is issue number 24 of Firestorm. Mm -hmm. And then we have, uh, the, I'm going to have to find the other one, but we have three chapters of the 1963 miniseries written by Alan Moore. These are awesome, very much like the uh, Silver Age. Highly recommend that. Uh, they, they, do, they don't sell. They didn't sell the last time very well, but I, I'm still stuck on trying to get a lot of you guys who haven't read this to buy this. But this is Starman, and this is issues 0, 1, 2, and 3. Awesome freaking book. Highly recommend it. Great I series. concur. Then, dig in. It's, just, it's a great series. Yeah, it really is. I, I know. That's why I gave you the omnibus. It's like Thank a, you. It's like a, one of those pill um, books. It's like a yeah. PDS. They're all thick thing thing is. <laughs> omnibus uh then finally um this one i know is going to be five dollars for the set but i have the punisher issues number 60 and 61 uh which as you can tell this is the very famous story where the punisher is trying to get away from the police so he turns himself into a black man. I was gonna say he poses. <laughs> if you're trying to avoid the police, why would you turn yourself into a black man? <laughs> Seriously. Come and on. just like that, the entire channel got new. Well, I know. <laughs> what about the brain? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Honestly, that sounds like a more that sounds like a modern story because they're not gonna arrest you if you're black. <laughs> no, that, yeah, that's that's more these days than back in the past, right? There you go. Okay. Well so. then again, you might get shot. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. I was like, "Oh, you know what? I'm definitely gonna be picking that up." Well, no way I'm gonna. Nice. No way am I gonna yeah, let that storyline sit. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah that, that particular story from Punisher is still pretty funny because because of the fact that happened to him when he, <laughs> when he was <laughs> trying to hide, hide himself. Punisher <laughs> Lane, I'm curious, Black. Yeah, Rhaegar saying the same thing. Actually, it makes sense now than it does then. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Jack of Hearts, Marvel, DC crossovers. Oh, that would be good. Uh, I'm just like wondering though, because if he did it today, he wouldn't. He said he'd probably get shot first. He wouldn't get arrested. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, Grant was, I mean, like back then, nothing like characters have gone through a variety of changes, include, see, including is, race change. I see he has the Luke Cage costume up there. Is he just going to pretend to be Luke Cage? <laughs> Because that's the that's the worst thing to do. Because no, no, this is this is the Punisher and Luke Cage. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I yeah, thought, yeah. I thought he was just gonna try to, because imagine if he puts on the Luke Cage costume, trying to be black. He's gonna die because they're gonna think he's bulletproof. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it's, yeah. Well, it, it didn't really stick because eventually the, the black was slapped slapped right out of Frank. That's like Batman pretend to be Superman. That's the worst thing to think you ever want to do. Is there it? Although they did do a story where it happened the other way around once yes. in the, the old uh, Batman the Animated series. By That's the way, true. if if you want to get a table of black people next to you in a restaurant laughing, tell your child if they do it again, you're going to slap the black onto them. <laughs> I, I have said that. I, I have said that. And I, I just, I wasn't even paying attention. It's one of those things where Gail's like, don't say stuff like that. <laughs> but yeah, they're laughing their asses off out right uh, here. I, I mean, look, the reverse has happened. I mean, like in one of the issues of Spawn, when he encountered like a, a member of the Ku Klux Klan, and like his punishment is by cha changing that guy into a black man, and he got beat, beat up by his own guys. Oh, and by the way, 
if you if you really want to break the ice with a cop when he cut if you and this only works obviously if you're white but when he comes up and he says you know why i pulled you over look him straight in the freaking eye and go because i'm black that ends it right there it's it, well okay i have one guy get mad but otherwise it's just like they laugh yeah. Well, okay, <laughs> now we know why Anglantine really moved. It had nothing to do with economics. It was because, it was because the angry mob had finally found his house. <laughs> it's really, you know, make, have fun with Man, we used to have more fun with our racism. Yeah. We don't take it way too serious these days. I know, right? <laughs> right? I mean, like, a, a lot of comedians back then, like, they, they, did, they did a lot of race jokes, and, pe and people just took it in stride. Mm -hmm. I mean, Richard Pryor... On SNL. Oh my gosh! Yeah, the Chevy Chase Dead Richard Pryor thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The big, the biggest laugh I got out of something was one time I walked into this KFC and it was just all black people, and I just said the words out loud. I just walked into a stereotype, and the guy behind <laughs> me just burst out laughing. Yeah, yeah. I go figure, go figure, man. You know what though? I there there was uh. There was one stereotype I actually live uh, live up to. Uh, I will always love. Um, I don't. They don't have them up here in Muncie so much, but um, in Florida, you could be driving down the road and you'll you'll see a, a barbecue grill. Okay, let's pull over. Let's get some uh, ribs. Let's get some chicken wings. Let's get something along those lines. You know, it, it was always like barbecue finger food, so you could drive and eat at the same time, and. Um, I, I pulled up and I'm, I'm thinking, you know what? Yeah, I want some. I want some smoked ribs. And uh, I pulled up and I'm doing this and I'm walking around. I'm looking, and uh, older, older black man he goes, "Son, what can I help you with?" I'm not great at this point. He goes, "Son, what can I help you with?" Says so I was just seeing who was cooking because uh, if you're gonna buy ribs off the street, you, you got to make sure there's a black man at the grill. And he just says, "Oh, ain't that the truth?" And he just he and I'll tell you what it was some good shit. I don't care, man. I mean that could have went two two ways. You lucky you got the good one. <laughs> yeah, uh, but no, it, it's true, man. I'm telling you, you, you want to get the you want to get good street barbecue. Well, you, yeah, I mean they, I mean it was their culture that made barbecue in the first place, so, so of course they're good at it perennially. My my, but look, I, I'd say that to the black man, and then I'd have an Asian guy. He's like, I quit. Yeah, I work in the grill over there. Well, I'm, well I'm you're actually, also think, in the middle of Wisconsin where everything is so cold, everyone is pissed constantly. <laughs> <laughs> Glenzer, hey, you look like that chef from South Park. Give me some ribs. Actually, you know, we're, no, we're in the Midwest. Everyone's pissed because we're tired of the East Coast and, and the West Coast. Well, the, I, you're pissed because of the cold and you know it. <laughs> I had a talking to, and I had to talk to Gail about this because I'm very, I guess you can say I'm a little bit prejudiced when it comes to food. If I go into a Chinese restaurant and I don't see Chinese people working the grills, I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> if I go to a Thai restaurant, I want to see Thai people cooking Thai food. You know, it's uh, it's your culture. That's why when I go to a Mexican restaurant, I like to go to the mom and pop because it's usually a family that are, are fresh off the freaking boat. And they, they decided to start a business, live the American dream, do their own thing. Um and it's the best freaking food, you know. That that's just the way I see it, you know. England team goes to the, the Thai and Chinese restaurants and just expects like Tim Lim to just get him something. <laughs> Tim Lim is <laughs> everywhere. I don't know what you guys are talking about. I, I don't know how we lost him. I was watching. Wow. An, I was watching an anime, and this Russian guy. He was like, he was in Japan. Like in Japan. He has like his authentic, you he know, did, Asian cuisine. He did Bukuro and, from and, and, da da da. Yeah, 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 Dora, or Dora, whatever it's called, her. And I love that people are this space or this ripping. I mean, it's like, this tastes like crap. <laughs> He's like a Russian. <laughs> no, that's, that's just funny. Like, yeah, because going to Asia, I'm glad even the chi like the fake, you guys call them fake, you know, uh, Chinese places, but China Max actually, it's no, there's no white people or Mexicans. It's all Chinese people that work at these uh, locations. Hand Express also. sucks. I, you, you will, uh, you know, that whiteboard on the table. Steven Crowder, change my no. It is that Panda Express sucks. There would be no change my mind. <laughs> there is none of that happening. Mm -hmm. Panda Express is ball suck, and I'm not in a good way. I'm talking about with teeth. Uh, is just no. It is not good. 
Uh, when I go fast food in the Bay Area, I expect Latinos and drive through speakers doesn't work or else the food ain't good. All right. Oh my gosh. The, uh, we moved there in Orlando. There was this area called Little Vietnam. Just a, It had all sorts of Asian, Asian cuisine, but the two biggest restaurants were these big uh, Vietnamese. I'm uh, walking down the street and I'm thinking, okay, I want something. Chi- I'm, I'm going to get some Chinese food. And I looked in the grimiest freaking restaurant. They even had ducks, dead roasted ducks hanging in the window. I was like, yeah, I got to check this out. And I'm thinking it's either going to be awesome or I'm going to get ptomaine poisoning. Well, three days after I was done shitting my brains out, <laughs> I went back because that was fucking awesome. <laughs> so, so in other words, you got a why not both situation. Yeah, why not both? Why can't it taste great and treat your insides like a freaking grinder? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, of the <laughs> but yeah, I, no, it, it was it was really good. But oh my gosh, uh, I don't think they handled it well. <laughs> Mexican Mexican food is that lo- that local is the best. I we had a we're looking for a shop here, but we did have uh, a mom and pops. It was just this little hole in the wall restaurant that was absolutely awesome. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, actually, the uh, the the worst I ever got food poisoning. We went to a, a restaurant called Sweet Tomatoes, and we know exactly what made us sick because it's the only thing that the whole family had was this uh, uh, lobster bisque. It was good, and then all of a sudden, all of us were like, "Oh, why, God?" What was worse is it went by size. So Elizabeth got up first, and then Ashley was right after, and I'm like, oh, my God, I'm seeing my future. <laughs> it, took, it took three days to get to me. As, you know, like, it was like Monday, Elizabeth, Tuesday, Ashley, Wednesday, Gail. And I'm like, <laughs> I felt like yeah, just I should eat anything because whatever I eat is going to have a really short journey. <laughs> <laughs> I take a Pepto Bismol right away in yeah. advance. So just eat all the dry stuff I can. Maybe I can settle it down. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. We're we're a comic book channel talking about diuretic <laughs> food poisoning. It's okay. Right. Right. I don't know. I told you this was going to be that kind of stream. Let's talk about anything. I don't give a f- tonight. We're we're talking about whatever you guys want. Did so. you see the Joker two trailer? I think I sent I it to did. you. I liked it. I like this, uh, the way this movie's looking. Um, when I heard it was going to be a musical, I was like, okay, is it going to be a jukebox musical? Is it going to be a musical in the way that the soundtrack is basically uh, following pantomimes, which I can actually see since they both have the pantomime makeup on and all that. I, I'm wondering, are they actually going to sing, which both of them can? Um, I'm jazzed for this. This is this is a great and when I I think it's a great idea to make a musical. Yeah. I know a lot of people are off on that, but hear me out. This is exactly what I've always wanted. I want a lot of superhero movies, but I wanted them to start hitting different genres. You know, let's have that superhero horror film, uh unique like Con- flavor, King, basically. The greatest, the greatest version of Constantine of all time, uh, the, the Keanu Reeves. Uh let's have a let's have the comedies, let's have the dramas, let's say, you know, I think this is awesome. They're doing a musical about this and the trailer looked great. So I'm, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. I've, I've been saying, I've been saying this for years. If they really wanted to use this DC black label concept to like, they keep throwing around every time the Joker, uh, Todd Phillips, the Joker shows up. I want a version of John Constantine done by Guy Ritchie in the style of train spotting that sounds like the greatest thing ever what is a panty mime is it like when you feel pretty and dress like a girl i I, if it was a panty mime it'd be mining panties there you go um (laughs) i'd rather have food poisoning than read some of the current comic books as maranya being put out uh, especially from anything by tom taylor boom I uh, brought it back to comic books. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Maranya. And also, yes. 
I kind of, I've been hearing, don't spoil it or anything, because I still haven't seen it, and I, I do want to watch it. But I have heard some people saying that Ghostbusters just wasn't good. Uh, it's if so far it had hundred. If it had a hundred billion budget, which it, it's it's surpassed now, it'd be one hundred sixty. Mm-hmm. So like yeah, but the you saw the movie. Is it actually good? Yeah, I liked it. Um, <laughs> now, now is it great? No. If you no. you like, did you like Afterlife? Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. It's right. I, I'd say um, it's right around the same par as Afterlife. Um, now it does suffer by having too many characters, but I think because this is going to be the last hurrah for those, uh, the original Ghostbusters, I think probably so they're dying soon. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a fact of life. Well, the good thing uh, is we know who's taking over after they die. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we do. Uh, if, we do. If the president of this country can be a corpse, then why can't we get Ghostbusters sequels yeah, well into for, the next for those, years? Uh, And for those, oh. who, for those who don't like Pat Oswald, Pat have a good Oswald, night, Ted. He did well in there. You know, he's only in for a short little bit to give you a uh, bad luck on the, the villain. Well, Pat Oswald to me, Pat Oswald to me is a guy who I love his work. I don't know if we'd get along if we sat down and actually had a conversation he's a good actor uh he just doesn't have the same politics as we do i i do like him and uh i liked him in the agents of shield he played twins so i i truly by the way um i buy I, sometimes i buy collections and i don't know what's coming in them um I really hope I get this flea market spot where I can put my stuff out because I need someone to take my Superman Kal El son of a, mm. <laughs> my freaking hands. I know no one here would do that. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, like I said, they Stop brought back on. they brought back a few characters and you know, nostalgia character nostalgia. Mm-hmm. But overall, it, it to me, it's kind of like the action was towards the end, like, you know, towards, as far as, like, it suffered the same thing as Superman, uh, not Superman, but, um, Ghostbusters 2. It started yeah. off slow, but once they got going, it got going. Um, I liked Ghostbusters 2. And they're Me focusing too. on, they're focusing on the, the main, the granddaughter. I forgot her name is mm-hmm. Edie. What, yeah. Her, that's her name is, I can't remember what her name is, but, uh, okay. Sp- Spangler's, Spangler's <laughs> granddaughter. Edie. Yeah, she's the main character as she was in Afterlife, and this is the main character here, too. It focuses about her. And then, yeah, and so, yeah, and then because people were mad because there was, because uh, she meets someone and she had, they're like, friend, they're both girls, they're like, oh, lesbians, but no, it didn't happen that way, it didn't happen that way, so people wanted, expecting it, didn't happen, because this isn't busy, well, so, I, overall, yeah. I, I thought it was pretty good, you know, um, you get some callbacks, you get some, um, you know, some new toys, and yeah, you know, and then, uh, yeah, that's part of it. They cut out they cut out podcast podcast interviews as much, but I was kind of happy with. Same with yeah, the, same with the girl, um, the one that uh, the the Finster whatever 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 the guy's name is like you know in the, in the she's the she was the waitress in the first one. Yeah, yeah but she was in a different town. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, yeah, overall, I thought it was very good, and you know, it's it's worth watching at least once. It's not something really like oh my gosh, I got to watch it over and over again. Gil like, and I are. are talking about going to the movies tomorrow and I told her uh, it's Ghostbusters or Civil War. Those are the two I'm interested in seeing. Um, I, I was going to go see something about the last uh, freaking talk show Exorcist movie with Dave. Oh, uh, Late Night with the Devil. That was actually yeah. really good. I You but would probably that, really like it. It's a horror I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be on Shudder soon. So I was like, yeah, it, it's... If we could turn off the lights and put our phones down, we will get a, a kick out of it. But um, I, I do like watching horror films in a theater because you don't give yourself all the distractions. Um, but uh, I told her, let's go to one of those two, the Civil War movie or Ghostbusters. So, yeah, I read an article, says Glenzer, that said the heart and soul of Ghostbusters was Winston. Uh, that writer was trying way too hard. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, he he was in the Ghostbusters very very limited capacity. A little more in Ghostbusters too. A lot of people like Ghostbusters too less. So you know, you. I think Carly. Winston is the common sense. Yeah. Well, yeah, he he's a straight straight man. Well, well, Winston Winston is the audience. 
Winston is the there to ask the, ask the questions so uh, they, the scientist characters can explain it and then the audience knows. So, yeah, it's, yeah. It, 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 I, comment, I, uh, audience I, surrogate, as you said. I, I, I was just going to say, have a good night, Tev. A lot of people don't realize that Vanquin was actually the main character. You know, as far as the Ghostbusters and everything, everything was focused yeah, on him with Dana Barrett and everything. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure that that's pretty much explained in the first one. Yeah, yeah, but, and, but, but yeah. So, like I said, a lot of people don't realize that though, which is really well. Weird. It's because it's because Vankman is extremely unlikable. Um, wow. Yeah. No, no, we're talking about no, the one in the Ghostbusters show, that. not our one. Yeah. Double um, wow. Ouch. Oh, yeah, Venk like Venkman that. is Venkman is a bumbling idiot and wouldn't be anything if it weren't for uh, Ray and Egon no, 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 essentially no, carrying not, him on their shoulders all the time. I wouldn't say he's bumbling. I mean, you know, he he does okay. He's a he's well, a, maybe not bumbling, but smarmy. He's a smarmy idiot. <laughs> I always thought I get, Cal again, we're would, talking, uh, should play we're talking Cobblepot. Not the one in the mo movie, right. not our one. Right. <laughs> Ernie yeah. Hudson's best movie line is the movie Leviathan. If you, I've seen it a long time ago. I don't remember any of the lines though, Glenzer. But I remember it was uh, it was one of those two movies at the same time thing. It was Leviathan and uh, Deep Space, Deep Sea Six, or Deep something like that. Uh, they were both good in a crappy way, or crappy in a good way. Patton Oswalt was Patton Oswalt. Okay. <laughs> I get that. I understand that. Yeah. Um, well, like one of his best roles would have to be Remy from Ratatouille. That's yeah, not, I think that's yeah, probably that's, the best role. That was the peak of his career, I think. Yeah. I like him on King of Queens. Yeah, it's funny there. I'll tell you what. I, I had a really uh, good stroke of luck when um, we didn't have our internet. I told Gail that we need to watch a movie or TV show. She told me to put on Battlestar Galactica. That's sexy. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. Yeah, that's so, yeah. so you wanted to frack Katie Sackhoff? Is that what you're saying? No, no, no. I'm I'm very um, happy with my wife. Point being is, you know, no, I'm saying that my wife wanting to watch the sci-fi show. His wife wanted to frack Katie Hack. Yeah. There you yeah, which I would totally endorse. <laughs> Meg Foster says, uh, I know you've been through hell, and Hudson says, been through, bitch, we're there. Oh, okay. Uh, Meg Foster, by the way, is that redhead with the piercing blue eyes that was in uh, They Live. Yeah. All right. I, I remember her. I realize you must have gone through hell just in on gong. Okay, there you are. There you are. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, Good times, good times. Yeah, we're going out tomorrow. We're going to uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, get a spot in that flea market so I can drop eBay. I will drop. I will just empty out that store. I'm done. I'm done with it. And not to say this this guy who uh, I, I do think, you know, maybe I packed it wrong or something like that. But God damn it, I'm done with eBay taking so much. I'm done with YouTube taking so much money. <laughs> In uh, it's like thirty five percent and such. Come on, uh, yeah. but YouTube. Yeah, yeah I'm well, tired wait, of YouTube. wait till you find out how much the federal government takes from you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. State tax here. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, that's true. If I'm going to a shop, I'll actually my income will be known now. So go figure. Uh, but there we are. Anyway, guys, you have a topic. You have anything uh, of worthy notes and such? Well, have, have any of you guys talk, talked about any of the ty titles else, well, from Marvel that they solicited for X-Men? Yeah, yeah, that was yesterday's stream. Last, yesterday? night, <laughs> last night, uh, they had that conversation. I have no idea. I saw the teams, and I saw the people uh, who they have doing. I think, okay, maybe Gil Simone. We'll do something good, but uh, Neil Simone has not speak, done speaking. Speaking of X Men, have you guys been watching yeah, uh, right. X Men '97? Haven't seen any of it yet. I am yeah. so yeah. far. Like here is the pulse of the comic book industry, and I am somewhere way over here yeah. right now. X Men '97, yeah, low we pulse. We over on, on the Geeky Puppet Show. It's been phenomenal. It, it's actually been pretty good. I'm yeah. not against. I'm Although, not against I will, going to watch through. 
Yeah, although I, I will say you know, one of the one of the consistent critiques that people have with it is the pacing, and they're not entirely wrong because like they're going it's they're going things at a break at a yeah like they're a burning break. through they're burning through storylines like they're freaking Katie Pride walking through walls. Uh, they're they're doing they're doing what uh, Zack Snyder wish he could have done actually make a coherent a movie or a show you know, using multiple storylines from comic books. I I will give them I I will give them credit for not dumbing then, down the dialogue like the MCU has. Uh, I, I I have seen a couple of clips of especially Magneto and they actually let him talk like he's supposed to freaking talk and I'm I'm happy mm-hmm. about that. We also um, also oh, to give the uh, also to give the series credit. It gave it gave Ma- Madeline Madeline Pryor like a better faith in what happened to her in source material. Um, another show that me and my wife watched uh, this last uh, I, I guess four days it took about four days is a show on Netflix called uh, the One Hundred. Um, oh, oh yeah, that's up to the Oh, you have not the TV show. I'm saying it wrong. I'm saying it wrong. It's actually a a uh, physical 100 from from Korea. Oh yeah, physical it, 100. Yeah, they they get together all these buff people. It, it, they could be athletes. Uh, one was an actor. One was a fireman. Uh, one was a construction worker. Um, and then you have like some women in there too. And they, they're all different kinds of physical perfection. And they compete to see you know who who wins the games and all that oh, kind of stuff. Yeah. Did you guys talk that about can this? Only be one. Keanu Reeves. Yeah. What about Keanu Reeves? Oh yeah, yeah. So oh, I was <laughs> let, let RDV. It was his. Uh, All right, his no, he, you go ahead. So, so Keanu Reeves is an, has been announced to be the voice for Shadow and Sonic the Hedgehog three. Oh, cool. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 oh. it fits his role as John Wick being, being like the the dark broody guy. The, at, the as edge. long as he's not reprising Constantine anytime soon. Oh, oh, and Sherlock uh, creator addresses planned revival with Benedict Cumberbatch and Martin Freeman. Uh, is Elementary. that a show that would is it? Did anybody see the original? Is it any good? I liked it. I thought it was pretty good. Yeah. I um, I binged it when he got announced as Doctor Strange to see what we were in for, and he put more effort into Sherlock than he has into Doctor Strange. It annoys me, but. As far as modern day renditions of Sherlock Holmes go, I'm gonna be controversial here, but Elementary is the better version of a modern day Sherlock Holmes. I'll give that one a try. Yeah, that I, I can, I can attest to that. That has Lucy Liu. I'd rather. It does as a as a female Watson. Yeah. Yeah. What <laughs> uh, well, they didn't get uh, black voice actor for Shadow? How dare they? <laughs> oh no. Yeah. Rachel Zegler is teasing she's gonna be in a Romeo and Juliet project. You know what? I'm sorry. No, I'm first of all, <laughs> Rachel Zegler is a talented person. Okay. I know she said some stupid shit, but she is a talented person. Plus, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, after that whole Tom Holland debacle, what can Rachel Zegler do to make re- to, to be any worse? They've they cast Tom Holland next to some guy in, in a play. And the, the dude has a mustache. Kids, I, I, they're saying she's a girl. Maybe she's a girl. I don't know. But she's Wait, not a mustache. Wait, what did Tom do to Romeo and Juliet? You didn't hear about that? Uh, Tom and the little black girl that's got a, or black guy. I don't know. Zendaya. Way, not a must. No, it's not Zendaya. Um, but it's just she's she's not pretty. Or he's not pretty. I don't know. One. I don't know how. Oh, were they this. like parodying the whole um, only male actors on stage concept? Well, that's actually what people was saying. Why are you complaining about the mustache? Way back a thousand years ago, the fuck is up with these people who they can't realize that America has gone past the '60s, but they believe everything that happens now should happen because nine thousand years ago something happened. Because they're a bunch of reps, retro hipsters, that's why, and and they're ivory tower twats to, to boot. So, if, if it's if it's in the literature and it allows us to be all gender subversive and shit, then we definitely have to do it because hipster. Or or to put or to put it another way, they're they're champagne socialists. 
There you go. Invariably. Yeah, the original play, they were both Italian. Uh, Rhaegar, that's Moranya. Rhaegar saying uh, mid should be excommunicated from the English language. Okay. So oh, apparently- mid. Oh, it was mid. I get it. I get yeah, it. mid. So, so apparently there's talks of suits actually being uh, going back to syndication. After everybody started watching it on streaming last year, they realized it's still popular, so they might be bringing it back. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> I have no idea what that is, but Suits was a, it was a 2011 TV show about lawyers, and it starred um, Gabriel. Ma- um, I think it was Mock, the guy who played uh, in their uh, Spirit. Mm-hmm. I'll, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna make a bold declaration. I'm gonna make a, a New Year's resolution in April. This is the year I finally finish Cloak and Dagger, the TV series. <laughs> Suits is where uh, Megan Mackerel got her big break. I'm on the first half of uh, of episode one, and I have been since the oh. show came out. But I'm so, pretty sure I can finish this show so, of Cloak and Dagger. So, the, so basically, Suits is gonna be uh, it's gonna be called Suits LA, and it's gonna start start Stephen Amell as the team as the lead. Oh, okay. Yeah. So actually, that that, that that's a good question here. I, I I've got a good one. For chat, for you guys, is there a, uh, a comic book TV show or movie that you haven't watched, but the TV show or movie is about characters that you actually like? Why not finish the Dabney Coleman movie instead? You know what? I watched Cloak and Dagger starring Dabney Coleman about 100 times. Ladies and gentlemen, it is so much fun. Search oh. out Cloak and Dagger. I'll admit that I never actually watched the um, Keith David Spawn series, even though yeah. I know it's good. I just haven't gotten around to it because I can't find it anywhere. Yeah. How about you guys? Is there a show of a character that you like that you've never seen? Uh, well, Cloak and Nigger, I haven't watched that. I do like the characters, but I refuse to watch the show. <laughs> <laughs> You're the smart one. Uh, that first half uh, of the first episode sucked. Drop oh, there, there's, there's one. Here's one. Spike Lee Blade TV series. I love Blade, but I refuse to watch that show. Wait, oh, Spike that. Lee did a Blade TV series? Yeah, back with Spike. It, 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 remember Spike used to be a channel on yep. cable? Hmm. No, I, I, okay. it did happen. Because they had, they had the girl um, from Team Wolf was on there first. The one that plays like the, like the, 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 the sister or the aunt or... So Matt is saying uh, it, for him it was Star Girl, but he did catch up to it this winter, and it is awesome. <laughs> I love that show, man. I seriously do. How about you, Dominic or uh, Black Cat? You, you see something? Or Spike uh, TV? Yeah, sorry, I, I. It's not like didn't watch it, but I dropped Titans halfway through season two. Well, you're, okay. you're lucky. You're lucky. I I went all the way through season four for the for the show. I think I That's think I did the Titan same thing. Bad, dude. Yeah. I also, think I made it. I made it to the middle of season two, and I was like, also, I could say the same about halfway through season five of the Flash, halfway through season four of Arrow. Doom I, Patrol I was definitely the better um, DC direct show. Oh shit! There's a season three. I forgot to watch it. There you go. I love Doom Patrol, and I actually forgot they did a season. Uh, four or, or three or a four. Few, uh, yeah, one. and a few episodes into Supergirl drop that too. I can understand that. Uh, let's see, Ahsoka and uh, and the Book of Boba Fett, but that's because Star Wars is dead to me, says Rogar. Yeah. I did not watch Ahsoka. I watched the Book of Boba Fett, and I I I shut I, I put the chairs up onto the table and I shut the doors behind me in the Star Wars cantina. I, I was like, Ooh. okay, you know what, you guys, I'm good. I'm do what you want with the characters. I'm out. <laughs> I watched. I watched Ahsoka, and they made my my wish to see the Night Sisters in live action monkey's paw because they ruined the Night Sisters entirely, so, and I hate it. So I. Oh, well, I mean, they were. Oh, they were or bastardized, and they in the animated Star Wars: The Clone Wars under under Filoni. Well, well, okay, but at least they were still canon because of the Filoni version, and Mother Talzin kicks ass in every universe. So, like, at least then I had Mother Talzin to latch on to, and I was like, yes, she is my character. But 
No, now they've now they've ruined the very concept of the Night Sisters, and I hate it. <laughs> so I, I have a, I have a question, and E, e probably isn't free because you already already know you already know the answer to this question. Uh, basically, a character that you like, comic book character you like, but the show sucked, but you forced yourself to continue watching it. What you you still watched it? He still watched it through. Okay, a sucky show of a character you liked that you muscled your way through. A sucky uh, show. I would have to go with Supergirl. Okay. You made it to the end? I, I jumped. No, I, actually, I, I jumped I jumped shift after, after season see, two. Yeah. Is there is there one that you did? You made it to the end? Oh, actually, actually there is one. Uh, I would have to go with... Ah, shoot. Actually, I'll, I'll have to get, get back to you on that. I just I've, had it. I, I, have, I, I have at least about three that I that, that, that I actually sh forced myself to way, way through the end because, you know, two were further to the channel, and one was just because I wanted the no-hunt end. Uh, that being Batwoman <laughs> and Supergirl, I watched all the way through, all the way to the end. Uh, and then the other one was Jessica Jones. Oh, you know okay. Okay. I mean, actually, I watched the entirety of the Netflix Sandman Abomination, so there's that, and I probably will suffer through season two whenever they finish okay. it. Help okay, me okay, out, okay. I, got I, I might be, I might be like a woman after uh, giving birth. You know, the pain, the horror. Oh my gosh, it's horrible, horrible. Ooh, I want another one. When we did our review, did it seem like I liked Sandman? It, it you were you were nicer you were nicer to it than I was, but I don't I'm, I'm thinking, I, I don't rem I don't remember if you liked it or not. I'm thinking I might want. I was like, I want to watch that again. No, you, you were going easy. You were going easy on Sandman. I'm I, I'm just I, I don't ask me to go through it again. I'm not like I will go through season two with you when season two comes out because they my answer. can't leave well enough alone. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew you. I that watched one. the episodes, and if someone let me uh, add them to edit, I would give y'all a way shorter season, but it would have been awesome. Uh, yeah, She Hulk is a horrible TV show of a character I love. I watched the whole thing, and it's like, why? I tried why to warn you when we reacted to episode one that it was not being as subversive as you thought it was being at the time. I know. For me, I, I think like, it is. I like the Falcon. I like I, I like the Falcon. You guys know this. I stand up for him all the time, and that TV show was god awful. A travesty. In they, all honesty, they trained I would rather, as the good guys. I would rather watch She Hulk than I would Falcon and the Snowman. Again. All right, all right. <laughs> for me, it would definitely be like Iron Fist season one, just because I wanted to watch Defenders, and I thought the stories might, like, I think the stories did link up a little bit. I, I actually, yeah, I can, I can definitely understand that. I'm in the minority. I did not think Iron Fist was that bad. I would not call it a bad TV yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, Marty. I actually really enjoyed it. I want to know what happens with the uh, the two, uh, him, uh, Iron Fist, and then the uh, the brother, each of them. Got Buck is the Joel Schumacher from. Have a good one, Matt. Take care. Be safe. Dude, Marania would make it better. She Hulk with no producing ever. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was it was not great. It was not great. Um, I did like a couple of elements in She Hulk, and I liked uh, a couple of I, I can't say episodes, but there were just times like uh, what's the what's the girl that pops up and she? I, I'm like, okay, can we follow her and Wong or more than She Hulk? Remember? Oh, that Madison. Yeah. Madison with yeah, a Y and two ends. Madison with a Y. Yeah, from, from here on in, the she -Hulk, this is the Madison show, and we're watching Madison Wong travel the universe. That's that's all I wanted, because uh, at least they were interesting. Surprising uh, no one. Wong was the better part of that show, but yeah. oh well. <laughs> uh, Iron Fist one was funny as uh, Like I said, I liked it. Uh, I've never went back to the Runaways. I only saw season one. It was okay. It was okay. And uh, I didn't go back to Legion, even though I loved season one. So I've got two seasons of that to watch. And uh, Doom Patrol has another season. I think I'm going to start that. Yeah. 
Doom Patrol is one I never finished because I couldn't get past the little stupid girl. Oh, and uh, somebody mentioned the uh, Swamp Thing. Somebody mentioned. Yes. Oh my gosh, that was so good. It was uh, Glenzer. Yeah, Glenzer. Highly recommend you check that out. Well, that was take take it off the air too soon. Oh, so yeah, way too soon. So, DC does not know how to run. What's a up, universe. Barbarian Kung Fu? When it comes when it how comes to Swamp Thing and Constantine, two of the best shows that they had, that they decided to basically cancel them. Yeah, um, Con- Constantine gets canceled after thirteen measly episodes, but Batwoman gets five seasons. No, 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 no. It was three seasons, and I had to suffer through all the episodes, so I know. Well, but <laughs> e- but even so, like. Constantine doesn't even get what I would qualify as a full season. In in oh. the old days, thirteen episodes of a like serious drama type thing is a half season. You get but, like twenty. You get like twenty six. Yeah. Yeah. 26, so yeah. so so like as 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 far as I'm concerned, Constantine got a half of a season, and Batwoman got three. Yeah. So that's because it. nobody cares about Echo. <laughs> nobody liked Echo. To begin with, so hey, we're doing an Echo yeah. st- show. Was yeah. that one? Yeah. Uh, all right, guys. Oh, go on ahead, say your piece, and then we're gonna call it. And not to mention, like the ec- the character was done very was done very dirty. Very like yeah. in a TV show, like yeah, much much so as she had as she had and like in the in the books for a good long while. All right. Uh, let's see what's going on this week. Um, me and Gail are going to go out tomorrow, to, hopefully to get ourselves a booth at the flea market. And then afterwards we're coming back and going to try to jump on maybe with some bad comic book reading um, or some team up reading, maybe both. Oh, and uh, yeah, maybe we could do Skeeters is a, a Skeeter sport or we can put, I'm sure you guys have a bad comic book that you would like to see yeah, ripped L- apart. L- LK is joining me over on extreme movie show. Around okay. uh, uh, seven p.m. Cent- no, yeah, seven p.m. Central, which uh, is eight p.m. our time. Yep, yep. Yes. Uh, we'll be talking about Fallout, season one. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then uh, after that, I got the top five. At, at All right, and on Wednesday, um, on Wednesday, once again, I'm just going to try to get on a lot more than I I have been, uh, and get this thing going. Um. Please click like, share, subscribe, uh, do all that kind of stuff. It's getting close to 18,000 mark again. I want to jump back over that and finally maybe get to 19 or 20 and open this channel back up. Uh, you guys, thank you very much for hanging out with us and um, constantly. You, you guys come back. It's a lot of fun. Uh, thank you very much to Dominic, to Eric, uh, Eric's Black Cat, Dalton the Authenticator, RDV, the real Dr. Venkman, except no substitutes. I actually smiled and liked it when uh, LK introduced you last night that way. I saw the video and I thought, (laughs) all right, good job, LK. Going back to the beginning. That's awesome. Um, But, yeah, check us out. Uh, We're going to be doing either 8 or 9 o'clock. We're going to do some live streams this week. And on Saturday, every Saturday, 8 o'clock is going to be the auctions. I showed off some books tonight. Going to have some more tomorrow because there's no way – if I'm going near this uh, shop, the flea market is near the shop. If I'm going near the shop, uh, I'm, I'm going to go in and grab some. Is uh, Yeah. Anywho, uh, once again, hey, thank you very much for hanging out. And as always, thank you very, very much for watching. Have a good night. Cheers, guys.